Hey guys, this is Chris Devanis with Inside Hardware, and today I'm going to show you another very simple and easy fix. Um, this is for monitors, external monitors, who um, stop working but uh, don't actually have any physical damage. Like you didn't drop the screen, you didn't get any liquid in it, crack it, or anything. Um, the cool thing about the screen that I found today is I just pulled out a dumpster, like I pulled out other laptops to um, uh, other LCD screens that stop working. So um, it's a pretty simple fix, and um, I ordered the part, got it within three days. So um, and it cost me like three bucks off of eBay. So um, here it is. It's already dismounted and uh, dismantled, as you can see. But uh, I'll show you some the basics and some tips and tools. For starters, I took apart the back of the screen to do so. I had to, in this case, it's an Acer. I had to pop off this little mini casing and unscrew some of the different pieces here. Once I did that. I had to detach the front panel by snapping it. Once that was done, the speakers that are built into this particular model, I had to unplug those with little cables, as you can see, on both sides, right and left. Um, as I did this, here's a little tip. Uh, little tip. I've mentioned this in other videos. I used um, this little pill case here as I took screws out and if this is your first time doing something like this, I'd suggest you take notes. And like in number one, you took out screws from the four back panel. Number two, maybe the mount for the joints and so forth. Um, and just as you go on, you can keep them in the same order. In this case, it was a pretty simple process. So I just kind of memorized it as I went. The nice thing about these is you can close it like I have and come back to the project a week later or so forth. Um, but also egg cartons work if you number them and can keep track or I've used also ice trays, especially small ones uh, they can be very handy um, so once I remove the front bezel which was just snapped on I had to detach as you can see here the speaker cables and uh, once I did that kinda followed intu intuitively the screws just beware try not to take off too much and you'll see why in a moment but um, this has already been detached it didn't take me that long honestly but, alright, that's kind of weird with one hand. Alright, so, this, part, this metal piece came off, and then I removed this piece. Notice I did have to remove the DVI and VGA uh, screwing pieces. That was a little bit annoying. Once I did that, the rest encasing just slipped right off. And, um, in this case, I left the board attached to the back of the screen just out of ease because as you can tell there's these really, really sensitive ribbon cables uh, there's another one here that I didn't unplug at one point but the, le the least you can unplug the better it is um, less chances you have of actually um, ruining other parts so um, I went ahead and took it apart and removed this one board or this one part of the board um, and this is actually the power unit and it powers your different um, for bulbs fluorescent bulbs that are in the retro of the screen to illuminate it and as well gives power to the different video adapters um, so I went ahead and unscrew this and pull this out and um, so this is actually a very common issue that uh, these kind of screens have especially if uh, you're in a big uh, building an office business place that uh, has several hundred of the same monitor chances are a couple of them will burn out and they'll often just toss them as opposed to taking the time to fix them which are much easier than uh, you think so looking at this as you can tell this is the plug where the plugs in for the wire for the wall um, it has these little wires here that go out to the um, different four bulbs there's two on the top and two on the bottom one little note remember which one's on the bottom which on the top it doesn't make a difference but it's good I always remember blue is on the bottom when I'm taking it apart in this case and uh, what I did for these two as you can tell they intertwine I, th I put a little simple knot don't pull it tight but that one and I'll just keep in mind in my mind that the one with the knot will go on the left um, so looking at the board trying to find the issue in this case I didn't even have to hook up a tester to any of the poles of uh, the different components you can tell right down here until there's actually somewhat of a heating burnt spot but I don't think that's going to give us any issues um, I kind of separated that but it's already coming apart now what you will notice is these tall things right here they're called capacitors um, they're part of what helps keep the charge steady 
for your um, screen and um, sometimes it, it doesn't necessarily make logical sense if one of them is not working the whole screen might not work or maybe just some of the bulbs won't work or all the bulbs won't work but you'll still have a picture in the back of the screen whatever the case sometimes it can still be capacitors and capacitors look um, different on different boards and so forth but uh, one way to tell with these kind of capacitors it's really simple is um, you'll notice an X say above those two if this stays focused um, and that's what they're supposed to look like sometimes it's a four-way sometimes it's a three-way um, And what will happen generally is they will explode implode whatever you want to call it or ooze liquid in this case you can see that right here on these three they have those black dots that's not supposed to be there and um, actually if you look at it at a different angle you'll usually see that good capacitors are flat-headed and bad capacitors that have gone bad uh, the little dome I, I'm guessing that's meant to be that way um, will actually raise up once it's kind of exploded or shot so I'm still questioning whether these three are good or bad because they do seem a bit raised but for sure I'm almost positive 100% that these are our issue currently so what did I do? I looked on the side of it and um, it, don't look for the brand so much look for uh, the units for measurement and if you could see on the on the side it was a thousand micro micro fat eye and 25 volt and um, knowing that I just googled that for parts found the cheapest on eBay um, they weren't the same brand but actually the new ones that I ordered are um, nearly the same size and look the same and that's what counts is that they're the same values and because this is pretty common you will find usually um, someone selling them in pairs sometimes it's four of them that need to be replaced sometimes it's two out of four in this case it's two out of these two and um, so I just got the parts I paid three bucks or so on eBay they came in I did buy them from Florida as opposed to getting them from Hong Kong which may have been a dollar cheaper but um, ship a lot faster and arrive a lot faster um, yeah, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and desolder these two. And there's four little joints. I'm going to start from the back and remove those two and then those two. Slide them out, slide new ones in. I will um, cut off the back ends because they're too long. And here's my two spare parts. So these are what my new ones look like. Once again, you can't see clearly what it says, but it's a different brand. This is actually a Sanyo, so they are name brand, but, and so they, I ordered two of them. So the baggie tells you what measurement they are, just to double check. Um, even if you don't know what these values mean or represent, you can always just uh, Google them anyway, UF, although it's supposed to be special letter U. Okay, I am going to resolder them in, let you know how it goes, and then I'll uh, record myself putting it back together. Okay guys, I'm getting ready to desolder these broken capacitors, but I want to give you a little note on capacitors. Um, in this case, the ones I ordered, there's no uh, sign of polarity, but you will notice that there is a longer and shorter leg. So I just looked them up, and uh, as a universal rule, the longer uh, leg probe here is uh, the positive end and uh, the shorter one is the negative. Capacitors come in all kinds of forms and sizes and shapes and um, the wires aren't always like this and they don't have to be round cylinders. So um, just Google them, that way you can get uh, familiar with them, Google Images. Uh, Wikipedia has some stuff on them and um, there's YouTube videos that uh, just scroll through a bunch of pictures of uh, burned out capacitors. Um, that was very useful for me at one point in time just to kind of learn uh, what burnt out capacitors kind of look like and to know what you're looking for. So I'm going to attempt to do this now. Alright guys, I have just finished my soldering job of my new two capacitors. And I have this loop here, I don't know if it'll work for what I want, but we can try it. And as you can see, my wonderful sloppy job there. Those are my four soldering points. I did have an issue with the one on your far left. Um, not sure if I made all the right contacts, but we'll find out in a moment when I uh, 
go to test it. Alright guys, well, plug that in and it works, and I'll show you in a second. But um, I do want to warn you first, don't just do this if you don't feel comfortable, please don't do it. Um, as you will see, I have tested it while it's still all taken apart. Um, you need to make sure that none of the contacts are touching each other and um, that you're not touching the frame. Not that this will give you any issues, but if you were to talk, touch the board, you can sh short circuit something. You could, it is a hazard, <laughs> electrical hazard. Um, I will tell you one thing, it scared me, but um, first time I plugged it in, it hadn't been working right, and I plugged it in, and it took a moment to go through all the capacitors, and not just the new ones, but just overall go through the whole board. So it took a moment, made some um, funny buzzy no buzzing noises, and I, almost, I was convinced that I must have screwed something up, but uh, it, it's just the way it is. So don't, um, if you hear some noises in the beginning, that might be normal. Just take a moment to charge up. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in now. And right now it is upside down. And as you can see, that no signal is there. It stays on, and in a second it's going to go turn off into standby mode because I don't have any video feed plugged in. And guys, that is a successful replacement. Um, remember that most uh, repairs in laptops or anything in the digital world, LCD screens, whatever, uh, general re repairs are actually just replacements. You're not actually fixing, you're just replacing, which can be considered fixing. Um, in response to some of the other comments that were made on my other videos, this is a very uh, general procedure. I did mention that this is an Acer monitor. A any a Dell screen or any other screen is going to be very similar. Um, the board light layout will be different, but um, essentially components are components and they all look the same, which is why you don't have to replace them with the same name brand as long as they're the same um, um, s s measurements. Um, and that should be all. Right now I'm going to put it together the whole screen and go ahead and test it up with a uh, video input. And that is a $3 monitor with, when it's all said and done, could be less than 15, 20 minutes of labor. I'm taking it apart, order the parts, get the part in, and um, resolder them in, put it back together. So thank you for watching, and as usual, please uh, feel free to write any comments, and I uh, hope to answer them as soon as possible. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye.